AU. Welcome to Star Citizen School. Go ahead and get settled in because we got a lot to cover. Today's topic is Star Citizen for you. Let's get it. Most game development follows a simple formula, pre-production, production, and post-production, just like film. But what you typically don't see are the moving parts in between, especially related to the business side. Finding a publisher waiting for you with open arms and a lot of promises. Then comes the deadlines and compromises that end up with a rushed product that's a clear departure from the original vision, just like film. How does this relate to you? CIG is bypassing the publishers, which gives them the agility and the time to create what they believe will be the best damn space sim ever. From the votes for stretch goals, which expanded the scope of the game, to seeing player feedback being implemented, Star Citizen backers have been heavily involved in what the game has and will become. But, and for some of you this will be a big but, I like big butts and I cannot lie, the fact that they have the agility, means, and the time to create an insane product means if you decide to jump into the verse, you need your own agility and time. Or rather, you need to possess attributes of flexibility and patience to have a blast and be ten toes down with the rest of us as we ride this thing out to the promised land. Flexibility is a required commodity because Star Citizen is constantly improving and evolving. The way we play from the flight model all the way down to how your item inventory is handled is radically different from 2014 when backers first flew their ships in Arena Commander and usable items trickled in over time. And it'll be different in the future when all items are physicalized and stored in lockers and other places around your ship. Everything you learn when you jump in might not be relevant down the road. And it's a good thing. Rather than plunking something down in front of you and saying, here, go get good. They're saying, hey, try this out and give us feedback on what's working for you and what can use some tweaking. So there's a dialogue between players and the developers to help shape a beautiful experience. But then we get down to patience. You'll definitely find out if you possess it with Star Citizen. For the most part, you'll be flying and walking around, doing missions, earning credits, or just touring the place and staring at how incredible it all looks without any problems. If it was a consistently unplayable bug fest, this video would have been made two years ago, and that would have been the end of my ride. Don't get it twisted, the bugs are out there and they can create enough problems to say, yeah, I think I'm done for the night. However, that's not typical of the overall experience. Some folks are running into more issues than others and some folks are running into less. That's just how it goes. But if there's one piece of advice that you should use, if nothing else, install Star Citizen on a SSD. I won't get into best system specs on a game that's not optimized yet, but take the advice about the SSD. Huge difference all the way from the point of loading the game up and onwards. Crashes have been rare, and if the server happens to crash, there's a recovery system in place now so you can recover your ship in the same state it was before the crash. There's other stuff that can happen, like elevators not rendering in or performance issues. If it happens and you're patient and wait 30 seconds or so, you get your elevator, or if you don't mind waiting for a hotfix or the next patch, the performance ends up improved. At the end of the day, alpha game development is for implementing features, not smoothing out the satin sheets to the polish of a finished game. If you understand that, then you should stick around. All this means nada if it's not the game you're looking for, if it's not the type of experience you want to be a part of. Is there enough to do, to see? Is it fun? How is the community? Will they help me out? These are the questions that for the most part only you can answer, but to help you find it, here's what I can tell you. Content-wise, you got several mission types, some legal, some not so much. It's a space game, so you know you got combat-based missions that'll have you going daka daka on everything from the smallest racers to big capital ships. Plus, when you're tired of your cheeks being compressed, you can get out the seat and fight on the ground or an EVA. Is boarding a ship and taking down hostiles more your cup of tea? They got it. For one of my giveaways, we took a big refueling ship, parked the space ambulance next to it, then brought in a dropship full of folks who jumped out, floated and fought their way to the refueling ship, then fought their way through it to find a hidden object to win the prize. Combat has some variety. Not everybody wants to pull out the pew pews though, and for that crowd, you might find yourself floating through abandoned space stations, reading logs and trying to recover a lost item. Or you might choose to be a delivery boy instead, picking up packages and dropping them off or being a mule with some space narcata. 
Maybe you take a job destroying a legal product instead. Or you could be useful to other players by responding to medical emergency beacons, making your way to them to either heal them on the spot or get them onto your ship to take them to a hospital. Sometimes you'll be called on to defend or harass the United Earth Empire in events where you can fight or salvage supplies or both. Sometimes you'll be stealing a bunch of narcotics. Other times you might be breaking through a blockade. Perhaps a relaxing night of mining is more your speed or space trucking tons of cargo for fun and profit. And that's just some of the structure stuff that's available at this point. You find yourself a buddy or two or an organization and the options expand. Guys like Steel Legacy get out there and hard fly like a boss. You've got formation flying squads, groups that take weeks to fly to the star in real time, racers. From time to time, I do in-game competitions to win ships or other prizes. There's a lot out there. Until later this year, hopefully, we're all in one star system named Stanton. In Stanton, there are four planets, one of which is a gas giant, 12 moons, four major cities, over 70 planetary and moon outposts, a prison, 37 space stations, a comma rays, an asteroid belt, several biomes, underground facilities, caves, apartments, bars, shopping, drug labs, hospitals, shelters, and black markets. Then you get into oceans, islands, lakes, crash sites, and other hidden locations. I'm sure there's a ton of other locations I'm not listing, but that's already way more than you could ever visit before the next system comes online next year. It's an overwhelming abundance of sites and places to visit and fly and drive through. And this is just the beginning. You've got a substantial amount of content in the pipeline to look forward to. New gameplay loops like salvage and data running. Creatures like space whales and crab monsters that'll sneak up behind you while you're out there doing your thing. Locations like rivers and abandoned capital ships you can assume control of. But what does it cost to be the boss in the verse? Real money cost is one of the most controversial topics of the game, obviously, but it shouldn't be. To hop in the verse, it costs $45, which gets you access to the game and the Aurora MR. The Aurora is a starter ship in every way, but it takes care of your immediate needs right out the gate. Transportation, a little bit of cargo space, some standing room, and a bed. So you pays your monies and you takes your stanton. Just about the entirety of all the other ships in the game could be earned by playing. Some folks feel like this gives people that spend a lot of real money on ships an advantage. I feel like earning your way from an Aurora to the monsters of ships gives you an advantage. Maybe because that's how I like to play. And it makes you comfortable at the helm of any ship in the game. There's a lot of folks who are scared to fly or maybe land their own big ships or feel like the smaller ships are too fast for them to control. Not I, said the sexy guy. You've also got the agency to trade up your ships with cash if you just want to play around with something different. I started with the Aurora, then after a while, I put 15 more in to trade up to the Avenger Titan, which I still love. Then $5 more got me the luxury 300i. You can keep chaining a few bucks together here and there for more expensive ships, or you can keep your money in your wallet and play the game. Maybe catch one of my giveaways here and there. Another option is renting. I'm sure a lot of noobs are sleeping on that. Loreville, Area 18, New Babbage, and Orison all have kiosks where you can rent ships. It's a valuable thing to be able to rent a ship and fly it around for a day or as long as a month before putting your efforts or your cash towards buying one, whether IRL or in-game, so take advantage of that. I'd say the value proposition is that $45 gets you a game that's impressive looking, a lot of fun, and the content well won't run dry for a very, very long time, if ever. I recommend it to anybody looking to live their best sci-fi space life. The point of gaming isn't saying the game that you play is the best. The point is to experience something you enjoy. The more remarkable and unique it is, the better. And Star Citizen is offering experiences that nobody else out there is doing. If you do decide to join, make sure you use my or anybody else's referral code, which will get you an extra 5,000 credits, which is useful starting out. You can find my referral code in the description. Until next class, fly dirty citizen. citizen. 
the executive producers of this joint. Thank you for keeping the lights on and the bandwidth cracking over here. Hold on, Mysterious Mike Alvira, Saucy One, Commander Blackout, JP for Stravinsky, Eyes Open 2018, Momo, John Arcadian, Smoke Mito. We hope you're doing well over there, boss. Still Legacy, Uncle Ron, The Huntress. Big thanks, executive bosses. You are very much appreciated. A very merry shout out to all the Dig That fam supporting the Dig That and Space Sam Mars. Salute to the mother of Buster Boy, Guillotine Girl, Commander Dr. Digital, Zayla Maru, Commander Leviathan Soul, Time Out, Fo 20 Twin, Train Man Rob, Dead Eye Ed I O, Figment, Evil Weasel, Titan Prime, Crash Test, Commander Cool Whip, Triple Awesome, Crash Down, Military Assets, Boss Anathema Nit, Giro, the CEO, June Star, Carl Pagin, the Mad Doctor, Waffle Iron of Doom, and Abner Doom. Big love, dig that fam. I don't call you fans, I call you fam, because that's what you are. My name is Dig That, and I like to do backflips, except I can't really do backflips. Fly Dirty Citizens. Citizens.